So I said I will be using F Sharp as the programming language in the course. You're welcome to uh, use whatever language you wish for your implementations, but all the templates will be available in F Sharp. I will also introduce F Sharp uh, sort of as we go. So in each of the tiny programming systems we'll be writing, I will tell you enough about the different language features of F Sharp that you will need to implement the, the different programming systems. In this video, I'll give you uh, just a couple of examples to kind of illustrate how F Sharp works. Um, F Sharp is a functional first programming language, which means that most of the time you can write, you will be writing um, sort of functional code that doesn't use mutation, but when you're calling out to some external library or when you're doing IO uh, or when you're when you need a mutable array for a performance, you can just do that without any, without any sort of restrictions. Um, F Sharp started as a programming language for the .NET platform, and it still uh, works uh, works with .NET. Um, you can access all the .NET libraries from F Sharp, and that's one of the nice features of it. Um, but F Sharp also has a JavaScript backend, which means that you can compile F Sharp into JavaScript and run it in a web browser. Um, F Sharp compiler and all the tools are open source. And an interesting fact is that many of the people from the team are actually based in Prague. Um, in the early days of F Sharp, it was used by finance companies who liked the fact that you can kind of nicely model complex computations. Uh, these days, it's used for pretty much everything. So there's consultancies that use the, the web based aspects of F Sharp for doing client side and server side programming. There's scientists who use it, for example, for systems biology. Uh, there's also various uh, bigger companies that have used F Sharp for their as their as their language and have had different kinds of successes with that. Uh, for the tiny programming systems, the nice thing about F Sharp is that the core of the language is very simple. You can use algebraic data types to model different structures, um, and the the fact that it's a mostly functional language is great because you can sort of focus on what's the, what's the core aspects of the logic. It also runs everywhere and has nice tools as the, for example, in Visual Studio Code. Um, and it's a language I happen to know very well. So if you have any questions about how to use it, then don't worry and feel free to ask. So to illustrate how F Sharp looks, uh, I have F Sharp running in Visual Studio Code. And one of the things I'll be doing here is that I will be using the F Sharp interactive terminal. So I sort of wrote some code and used Alt Enter um, to run it in F Sharp REPL. And here I get the result, which is three. I can also say, hello world and printfn is just a function that prints. Uh, it doesn't return anything, or in the F sharp terminology, it returns unit um, and it prints. So we can do all those basics. And um, to illustrate something a bit more advanced, I can define, uh, for example, um, a type to represent the result of some sort of computation which can fail or it can succeed and uh, produce some sort of integer as the result. So if I, for example, want to define a function called divide that takes two numbers, I can say if b is zero, then this is going to be fail. Otherwise, it's going to succeed with a divided by b. And so if I select all this and define it in F sharp interactive, let's say divide 10 by 2, run it, the result is 5. But if I say divide 10 by 0, the result is failed. 
And I'm showing you the, the algebraic data type, the, the result, because that's the kind of basic thing that we will be using all the time. Uh, I can also define a function print result, which will pattern match on R and say if R has failed, then we're going to say failed. And if this is going to be a success, then we do something else. Now, I want to point out that as I started writing here, uh, the F sharp interactive is actually checking whether I'm handling all the cases. And it tells me now I've written code that pattern matches on the result, <coughs> but it's not handling the success case. And this is something that's enormously useful if you're writing tiny programming systems, because whenever you're implementing an interpreter for some language and you're missing a case, the compiler will tell you. Um, so if I have a result, then I can say, uh, here's my result. Uh, and so now I can, for example, take those two and print the result. Uh, so let's run them. First one says success result is five. The second one says failed. Or I can use this and write, write this in a more idiomatic F sharp way and use the piping operator which says take the thing on the left, pass it to the thing on the right. So now uh, we have some basic printing. Um, so this was just a little example to show some of the things in F sharp. We will look at the language more systematically as we go later on. Um, I want to show you one bigger example. And this one is going to be uh, you creating a little web-based user interface using the F sharp to um, JavaScript compiler. And uh, I will be using an architecture for the UI based on the Elm programming language where the idea is that we define two types, one that represents the application state and another that represents different events that can happen. And we will implement two functions. One is a function called render that takes the state and builds up the HTML representation of the document. So if I have an application state, I can put it on the screen. The other function is an update function that takes the current state, an event that has occurred, and computes new state. And with just this, I can start with the initial state, render it, the user clicks somewhere, we get an update, construct a new state, again, we render that new state. And sort of go on and go on, uh, the state is changing and uh, we are re-rendering that. Um, the implementation will be using a virtual DOM library that kind of replaces the HTML without just deleting everything. It will compute a diff and apply the diff. So my first example is going to be creating a counter. And I already have a running script here in the background that's monitoring my F sharp source code, recompiling it on the fly and reloading this web page. So I have a web page uh, right here. And if I change world to F sharp and save it, uh, the watcher notices the change, recompiles that and uh, the page gets refreshed. So how do we build a counter? Well, I need, I need um, some initial value. So this is zero, that's my state. And I will need some events. So I'm going to change the code to print the current state. Um, the, the state argument of this function is just whatever, whatever state we have. So we can say uh, the current count is state 
convert it to string. Uh, so if I save this, now it says uh, count is zero and we need some buttons to increment and decrement the count. So uh, what I'm using here inside the render function is a little domain specific language that lets me construct uh, HTML elements and uh, the, the operations here take two lists. One is the list of attributes or also event handlers where I can say when the click uh, is triggered, do something in response. And uh, to do something useful, I need to define my events. So I will define a new type that represents an event. And uh, one of the events here is increment. The other that I will use later on is decrement. So if we click increment, then uh, what we want to do is we want to trigger the increment event. And uh, similarly, we'll have a button for decrementing. OK, so now I also need to implement the update function that takes a look at the event. And if the event is increment, it will return state plus one. If this is decrement, then it will return state minus one. And if I save it, then in my browser, I now have button for increment and button for decrement, and both of these work. So uh, I'm, I'm showing this example because it actually has a lot of the same structure that our tiny systems will have. Uh, it's got a, an algebraic data type to model different kinds of events that can happen. And it has an update function that takes a state, produces a new state. And pretty much all program evaluation has the same structure where you have some state and you're constructing a new state. So this was um, a sort of introductory example building a counter and I will try to build one more example where we also need some sort of state. Um, so we want to build a to-do list. And for that, we will have uh, um, a type representing a state with a list of items in my to-do list. And I will also need uh, sort of current text of the item that uh, the user is adding. So I'll call this input and this is going to be string. Um, we'll start with just one event called add to add an item. And uh, to make this a little bit more interesting, my initial state will have uh, items um, introduce F sharp and learn about tiny systems. And my initial input will be an empty string. And we will get back to the update function later on. For now, we just return state. Um, and in the rendering code, uh, we will render the, the title. And then I'm going to create a, an unordered list inside which we will iterate over all the items in my state. And for each item, we will create a li element that will contain the text with the item. So just the item. So if I do this, it gets recompiled and here's my, here's my little to-do list. Um, the thing that we need to add now is we need some sort of input uh, text for entering, uh, for entering new items. So the user will have to write the new thing here. And again, a button uh, where if I click the button, 
then I want to trigger the uh, operation to add an item. And there's one subtle thing that I need in this demo that um, is maybe not as elegant, um, but um, if we want to implement the add operation, we need to have some way of accessing the current value from here. So if I say do something clever, uh, we need to copy this text from the text box into this input input field. Um, and so for that, I will need another event that will represent sort of change of the input. And uh, here I need a little bit of JavaScript. So I'm going to copy this bit of code uh, because it's a bit longer. And um, what I need to do is when the change event happens here, then uh, we get access to the element and from that element, we sort of convert it to the input element object and get the value. So whenever the input changes, whenever I'm typing in the text box, this will trigger and I can then remember the current input so that when the add event gets triggered, I can add a new item. And uh, the last thing missing is my update function, where if we receive a new input, then we're just going to return the state as it was with the same items. And uh, also the new input. And when we get an add event, we're going to return uh, all the items that we had before. We're going to append to the end the new input and we're going to reset the input to empty. And so if I save this, <coughs> then hopefully uh, do something clever. I click add and there's a new uh, list item added to my list. Do something even more clever and again I can add items. So uh, this is still a very small example of using F sharp, but the point is uh, with um, the, the sort of most of the things I was writing here are very, very straightforward. It's just a type definition for a record, type definition for an algebraic data type or union, um, some primitive values and pattern matching where in response to some event, we construct a new new list item. And for the HTML rendering, I use this little domain specific language, which is sort of a bit more fancy, uh, but that's, that's not something that you will need in the course, at least not in the beginning. So this is all the kind of complexity that you will need at the start. And I think that's, um, one of the one of the reasons why F Sharp is a is a nice fit for the course. So uh, have a look at fsharp.org. You can find more information there. Uh, but I should point out that we will only be using a small part of the language, and I will introduce all the constructs that we will need as we go through the course.